Um, I'm going to briefly talk with you about wireless radiation in health and what the science shows us now and, and make clear that this is a rapidly moving field. There's a lot going on. I'm not going to go into my background. You've heard that. But I will. these are the covers of two of my uh, books, and Disconnect is available <coughs> on Amazon. Uh, actually, uh, and uh, we certainly would encourage you um, to look at it because it was written almost 10 years ago, <coughs> but there's not one word of it that I would change. So let's take a look at what small cells look like. I mean, you've seen them, um, and how many of you have one nearby or have noticed them going up? All right. And um, I would have to say they are singularly unattractive, although if um, those neighborhoods that make a lot of fuss about these things, um, they are able to um, get political attention. And then that leads to, of course, uh, action. But in the poor communities, they're putting up things that are pretty ugly and with very little thought about what the implications of them will be for people's health as well. Now, the most important thing I want to tell you about 5G is that it doesn't exist yet. Okay? It's a work in progress. There are no standards for measuring it. We have no devices we can use to measure it right now. And that for it to work, it's millimeter waves, which are going to go very fast. That's certainly true. But in order for 5G antennas to work, they're basically, those antennas are bringing 3G and 4G right smack against your building, your bedroom, or wherever it is, because... <clears throat> There are so many devices out there that are 3G and 4G now that if you put an, an antenna up that did not uh, talk to 3G and 4G, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be working. And I see the IT fellow nodding in the back because, of course, 5G is, you have to, for it to work, you need a 5G router, you need a 5G computer, you need a 5G baby monitor, God forbid. We think that the most important solution to this will be a wired system generally. Wired for all wireless communications that are now wireless, should be wired, and can be wired. So in order for 5G to, to work, it's going to have to have these antennas every two to ten homes, and they can be these boxes that are like small refrigerators. And talk about liability for the city. When an accident happens and a truck or car crashes into one of these things, they then get knocked over, they can talk about sparks and arcs and all kinds of things that happen with complex electrical equipment. So I think I'm going to show you one little video that really encapsulates what this is all about. And this is available uh, from Investigate Europe. This is a team of investigative journalists that spent several months looking into what 5G was and concluded that it's a bit of a shell game as currently constituted, but I'll let the video speak for itself. There's a revolution on the way. It's the 5G revolution. Although some say this will be more like an experiment that will affect billions of people. 5G stands for fifth generation mobile services. The internet will be faster than ever. Downloading a high definition movie will take mere seconds. By 2025, the European Commission is planning for all urban areas across the continent to have seamless 5G coverage. This will enable a new age in the internet of things smart driverless cars and smart hospitals, smart fridges, coffee makers, and even baby diapers. But what citizens are not told is that for this to happen, countless new antennas will be added in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, even in our homes. Are mobile communications dangerous? The scientific community is divided. Some experts maintain they are safe, others have serious concerns. In 2011, the WHO classified electromagnetic fields associated with cell phones as possibly carcinogenic to humans. And studies published in 2018 showed that when rats were exposed to such fields, it increased their risk of certain types of cancer. Even among those who believe the technology is safe, many admit that more studies are needed. And for 5G, there are almost no studies. Telecom companies themselves have noted that electromagnetic signals may pose health risks. So why are the EU Commission and our governments turning a blind eye? They cite guidelines established by transnational scientific bodies. But Investigate Europe has found that these bodies are closed clubs. People with dissenting opinions are not invited in. 
and a significant number of the scientists involved have received funding from companies with vested interests in the 5G rollout. There is no risk-free society. Other things we consume are also bad for our health, from alcohol to junk food. But if you don't want a hamburger, you can simply avoid hamburgers. With 5G, there is no opt-out. That video was the result of a year and a half investigation by a team of investigative journalists in Europe, and there is a very detailed written report that goes along with it. But I think that it does provide a very short explanation for why we are in the situation that we are right now with respect to this problem, which is that we are flying blind. We have been told, trust us, we'll build the system, we'll figure it out, and it's all going to work just fine. Well, uh, we have lots of reasons not to trust in, that, uh, in those promises, and I'm going to go through some of them right now with you. And I, frankly, there's been a much more robust discussion about this in Europe, and here's just one example of what's gone on there. These are demonstrations that are taking place against 5G. This is over 1,000 people in Bern, Switzerland, um, and I will note that a number of uh, Swiss states <coughs> have issued resolutions that are halting 5G. Now, this is the home of the World Health Organization. They already have lower standards, as Theodora Scarada is going to show you, than we do. And still, <coughs> what the countries have come to realize is that their standards will have to be weakened even more to allow wireless 5G. So, a wired infrastructure is faster, safer, and more secure. And 5G is not currently being proposed to be wired, but only wireless. Now let's look for a moment, and let me ask you, how many of you know what the electromagnetic spectrum is? Because it's actually quite a complex thing. H hands up if uh, you know what the spectrum is. Well, then I'm not going to spend much time on this, except to say that it goes from everything that turns on the lights in this room <coughs> to ultimately cope uh, cosmic rays and X-rays, which are invisible and we know are damaging, seen out here, the ionizing spectrum. It used to be thought that unless radiation was ionizing, it, had, it was too weak to damage DNA. That is not any longer the case based on research that has been done by the U.S. government National Toxicology Program, among others, which is clearly shown evidence of DNA damage that can take place with non-ionizing radiation. And <clears throat> exposures to non-ionizing radiation can be as varied as your microwave oven, which works at 1,000 watts of power, or your cell phone, which works at less than one watt of power. But the frequency of the oven and the frequency of the phone can be the same. It's the power that differs. Now, <clears throat> it's not power that determines damage. That's the important thing to understand. It's the pulse. It's the fact that these signals are going And that signal, that irregular signal, so long as you have a phone on and in your pocket, that signal is getting into you, into your body, because the way the antennas are configured in phones, they're around the outside or on the back. And if you have your phone so that the glass is facing into outward, then the antennas are going right into you. Now, of course, my phone, of course, is on airplane mode. <clears throat> my phone, of course, is on airplane mode. But if, so long as you have it in your pocket, it's radiating you. And I'll show you some examples of that in a moment. This <coughs> is the standard for, for testing phones, and it is 23 years old. <coughs> 23 years old. While I explain this, an empty bowling ball there, the head of a <coughs> guy larger than you, fluid is poured into it, homogeneous fluid. That's supposed to be the brain. Not all the different densities of the brain that we know about. 
and then a stick is dipped into it to see at what point the head heats up. Okay. This should be in here. It's all right. No, no, no. Don't bother. Um, and this system is 23 years old, and it only accounts for heating. It does not account for the fact that we know you can damage the eye, you can damage the hearing nerve, and it doesn't take into account children and pregnant women. This is a very simple way for you to know why you should not have phones in your pocket. Okay? Trying to get the animation to work here. I think not, actually. No, no, that advances it. Okay. Now, if you go to general on your phone and you go click on about at the top and go all the way down to our, at the top you see about and go all the way down from there to RF exposure on your iPhone, you will see under legal and RF exposure, you will see in your phone this warning. It says how to reduce exposure. It tells you the phone is tested five millimeters off the body. And therefore, you should know. There it is. Now, that is why the city of San Francisco in 2010 passed the cell phone right to know law. How many of you know that? Anybody in here know that the city passed the law? And you know what happened? At the time, the mayor said the city was not for sale. So the CTIA took their $80 million a year annual conference out of San Francisco. Within four years, there was a new mayor and new, new supervisors. And the city decided, after being sued repeatedly by the telecom industry, that they would no longer try to implement their law, although they had been allowed to do so. And that law would have allowed this information to be more publicly available. Now, breast cancer is one of the things we're concerned about. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, except to show you that this young woman developed tumors right under the antenna of the phone in her breast. And she had no family risk factors. She was a vegetarian. She was a runner. And her breast cancer, according to the surgeon who removed it, was due to keeping her cell phone in her bra. And this is something else you need to know about. And this is what's interesting. How many of you heard the Chicago Tribune found that cell phones exceed current safety limits when they tested them? Okay. So therefore, I'm going to take a moment and tell you. The Chicago Tribune paid for independent testing of phones. And they showed that the three most popular phones exceeded the current guidelines by up to five-fold when tested directly in the, uh, against the body with a small separation. That's what the Chicago Tribune investigation showed. Very few people know it. Your city ought to be aware of it. It's reason why nobody should be keeping phones in the pocket, especially not children. Why don't they test the way that people use it, like next to the body? I think if phones were tested the way people use them, none of them would pass. The results from the first test, the way manufacturers do it, are in. All three phones come within the safety limit. OK, so that's no surprise to you? That's no surprise. Time to start our test the way most of us carry them. We'll roll this thing all the way up until it touches and has a zero gap. Have you ever have you ever done that test for anyone else? Before? No, I haven't, because it's not a requirement, so the, the manufacturers don't do it very often. Not required, even though most people we talk to say this. Yes, I definitely would not carry it five millimeters for my body. I would have it very close to me. So the tests are all done. Tests are all finished. And? The number exceeded the limit. It went up significantly uh, with each one of the phones. That's right. The phones exceeded the safety limit when they were moved right against the body. The radiation absorbed increased three to four times. OK. Canadian Broadcasting, a public corporation, paid to investigate it. They did this in 2017. No response. No response. The city has a duty to warn. The public has a right to know. 
Don't forget that. The public is not being informed about this risk because the city decided not to enforce its own law, that it did pass. And I think it's time to ask the city attorneys to rethink that because the law is already on the books. It hasn't been withdrawn. And I think it's time, in light of these data, for the city to provide that safety warning. We know children absorb more radiation because their skulls are thinner, they contain more fluid. In fact, the bone marrow of a child's skull can absorb up to 10 times more radiation than that of an adult. And that is something that the World Health Organization has indicated in some of its documents as well. This gives you a simulation of virtual reality. You know how popular the devices are? You can put them in a cardboard thing and go to the moon. Well, before you get so excited about that, I want you to realize if you look at these simulations, the red, I'm sorry, the yellow and white is the hottest part. You can see here it gets through into a bit of the eye of the 34 year old but all the way into the eye and actually into the midbrain of a six-year-old. These are never tested for this kind of use. <clears throat> There's no test at all on that. So the fact that we are exposing children to levels of radiation that have been shown to be go all the way into their brains is something people have a right to know. And we, the American Academy of Pediatrics has taken the position that this is not a good idea. We have safety cards available to you, and please take as many as you can give away and contact us if you want more of them. We have a list of ridiculous ideas, and I used to think this was the worst. I actually met a grandmother who said that her grandchild will not go to the bathroom without the iPad. And there are some men who won't go to the bathroom without, but we'll leave that. <clears throat> I think probably the award for the most ridiculous right now is the vaginal speaker, wireless vaginal speaker that can play music to your unborn child. No, I'm not making it up. You see, what we have in the tech world is the following. You have brilliant engineers in technology. There's no question about it. They're doing the most amazing things, but they don't know anything about biology and they see the human body as just a kind of nuisance to get over. For example, Elon Musk is going to implant computers into the brain. Well, guess what? If you are a paraplegic, then that might be a risk you want to take. But if you are a normal, healthy person, the neurosurgeons are on record as saying this is a terrible idea. And it is, uh, you know, it, it, there already is a prototype in monkeys and I hope for Mr. Musk's sake that he doesn't decide to be the prototype for the human. What we're dealing with here, as we did with cigarettes, is you've got primary exposure when you take your phone and put it here, which hopefully after this time none of you is going to do that, nor are you going to keep it on in your pocket for any length of time. You have secondhand exposure when the, the person you're riding in a subway car or bus and somebody next to you is on their gadgets. And then you've got third hand, which is, means that there's not going to be any escape if 5G is implemented in the way that this city is on the verge of doing. Now, why is this highly problematic? Because, according to a report from Harvard University Center for Ethics, the FCC is a captured agency. If you look at the list of people who chair the FCC and who sit on the co commission, they come from and go back to the industry. It's a revolving door. And this, according to the investigation, which you can find online here, through our website or through theirs directly, it recalls big tobacco. Buying up, influencing on both sides of the street. Now, I'm not going to take time to go into the detailed science here but I would like to show you just this one example of what we know about synergies. In studies were done in mice where we took a known liver carcinogen, ethyl nitrosinuria, and we knew it was going to cause liver cancer. So here you see the controls, okay? The control exposed to the liver carcinogen. This is the liver tumors. 
But look what happened when you added exposure to a small amount of cell phone radiation. The amount of liver cancer produced in these mice doubled, and it increased greatly with exposures below that of the cell phone and close to that that you might get from a router or a tower if you're living close by. This is very worrisome data, and I want to assure you it's not alone in that regard. This is a study that was done years ago showing that cell phone-like radiation can damage the blood-brain barrier. Now, the blood-brain barrier is to protect the brain from being exposed to toxic things. And this shows that you can weaken that membrane, and indeed, you weaken all membranes. That means that any toxic material that's in your body will get more deeply absorbed. Now, cutting closer to home, in my TEDx talk, I go into what is the brain and sperm have in common. And one thing they have in common is that they have barriers that don't work very well and are infringed upon by cell phone radiation. Cell phone radiation clearly damages the, the cells of the testis. You can see here the nice control ones, and here you see the exposed with the cell walls completely obliterated. Now, this is not just of academic interest, but again, there are fertility problems that are quite substantial so that men who want to have healthy children are advised by the Cleveland Clinic to get the cell phone off their body. It's also been associated in the scientific literature with testicular dysfunction and erectile dysfunction. In the National Toxicology Program, the U.S. government's largest study ever done confirmed years of other studies showing multiple organ effects from cell phone radiation in animals, including heart tumors, brain tumors, adrenal medulla tumors, and more importantly, DNA damage in multiple organs. So when you hear somebody tell you that cell phone radiation is too weak to cause direct DNA damage, which is what we hear all the time, you can say yes, but it does cause DNA damage indirectly. And that is what the National Toxicology Program has reported. The importance of the NTP results cannot be overstated. There are increases in a number of cancers that we have seen increased in humans who are long-term cell phone users, especially brain cancer. Now, the International Agency for Research on Cancer in 2011 said this was a possible human carcinogen. My colleagues and I since then have said that we think it is a definite human carcinogen because the human data keep mounting, and now we have animal data. And every compound that we know causes cancer in animals, will also, um, can also produce it, I'm sorry, every compound that we know for sure produces cancer in humans, will also produce it in animals when adequately tested. That is why we've provided this update, in which we say that if the WHO were to evaluate the data now, they would conclude that cell phone radiation is a human carcinogen and should be listed under Prop 65, which is something I'm going to be talking to the AG's office about tomorrow. The CDC has reported increasing cancer among children in the United States. And let me be clear, I'm an epidemiologist. We cannot say why the cancers are increasing in children. But we do know that there's some strange things going on. How many of you know someone under the age of 40 with rectal or colorectal cancer now, under the age of 40? Three. All right. I had several phone calls in the past month from women in their 30s with no risk factors but metastatic rectal cancer. Now, we started the Baby Safe Project <clears throat> with Yale University and more than 240 experts in obstetrics and gynecology, and information about all of that can be provided in the safety cards that are outside of this room, Theodora. Is that correct, the safety cards? But um, I think that what we can do to uh, facilitate things, Sarah, is if you will pass out, bring in and just pass out some, I think that would be very helpful. Um, and if people want more, I'm just going to briefly show you what, what is going on with the honey. Something is killing the bees, that much is certain. Britain has seen a 17% decline in the bee population over the last year. In the United States, it's around 
It's been dubbed colony collapse disorder. Experts say possible culprits are a pest called varroa, pesticides, climate change and loss of habitat. Now, some say, add to that the possible radiation from mobile phones. New research from scientists at Punjab University in India claims microwave radiation from mobile phones could be part of the problem. Researchers fitted mobile phones to a hive and powered them up for two 15-minute periods each day. After three months, they found the bee stopped producing honey, egg production by the queen bee halved, and the size of the hive dramatically reduced. I spoke to an independent scientist in the UK about how the bees might have been affected. He pointed out that bees have a pigment called cryptochrome. Animals, including insects, use cryptochrome for navigation. They use it to sense the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. And its ability to do this is compromised by the radiation from mobile phones and their base stations. So basically bees do not find their way back to the hive. Dr Goldsworthy has written to the UK communications regulator Ofcom suggesting they change the phone frequencies so bees won't be confused. It is possible to modify the signal uh, coming from the mobile phone and the base station in such a way that it doesn't produce the frequencies that disturb the cryptochrome molecule. So uh, they could do this without the signal losing its ability to transmit information. Ofcom has passed the details on to the mobile phone companies. We spoke to the Mobile Phone Operators Association. They responded. Research scientists have already considered possible factors involved in colony collapse disorder and have identified the areas for research into the causes of CCD, which does not include exposure to radio waves. And expert B scientists are sceptical. We know they're sensitive to magnetic fields. What we don't know is what use they actually make of that. And nobody has as yet actually demonstrated that honeybees make use of the Earth's magnetic field when navigating. But why does the future of the humble bee matter? So this is honey that's been sealed over. Yeah. And this is fresh honey or possibly nectar. Flowering plants need insects for pollination. Insects like the honeybee. The honeybee is one of the most effective and it pollinates around 90 commercial crops worldwide. The commercial value of bees pollination estimated here in the UK at $290 million, while in the USA it's currently estimated at around about $12 billion per year. Imagine a world without bees, a loss of orchards or meadows and flowering plants no honey. The reality? No one knows exactly why the bees are dying, but one thing is certain. Bees matter. Sasha Herriman, CNN, Sussex. That should be a game changer in and of itself, because there are over a thousand pollinating insects that are at risk from this exposure. Now that was to the microwave radiation from phones. There's one more recent studies that have shown that 5G itself resonates exactly with small insect bodies and impairs their behavior in terms of what we would expect from modeling of such exposure. Now I want to just show you very briefly what the French did. And I find this an appalling failure of our system, but one that I think reflects the captured agency that is running our policy in this government. What the French did is they took um, 400 phones and they found when they tested a subset of them that 9 out of 10 of them failed to meet the current standards. And he can take as many as he wants to give away to the soups, by the way. All right. 9 out of 10 of them exceeded the European limits. And if you look here, these are the limits, okay? But look at what happens when you test the phone. This is just the Apple iPhone 5. Look at that. Look how much more it exceeds the limit when it's tested against the body. And so we, and this, by the way, is not unique to Apple. 
the Samsung phone is is the same. And if you applied these to the U.S., which I'm not going to have time to do, but this, for those of you who are geeks, you might want to note this. And all of our slides and materials can be found on our website. Basically, some of our phones exceed the current U.S. safety limits by as much as tenfold. Again, the Apple iPhone 5 being one of them, but the 6, 7, 8, I think, are right up there. Now, the United Nations has had appeals signed by over 240 scientists uh, who are calling for a moratorium on 5G until we have more research on safety. I'm one of them. I think it's long overdue. We will need a million new antennas under the current proposed wireless system for 5G. I think the wired applications of 5G, like for police and fire and emergencies and banking, and factories which use robots, they can go ahead with their wired use, but we don't need the wireless uh, to be bombarding the rest of us so that a few people can have access to movies and video and pornography on their phones. This is a very important study because this study, consistent with the National Toxicology Program, showed DNA damage. The same kind of DNA damage that I showed you in the animals shows up in people living close to mobile phone base stations. Again, in the interest of time, I can't go into this in more detail, but those who lived within 80 meters had significantly more biological markers of DNA damage in their blood in comparison to those who live further away. This is a published, peer-reviewed study. All of the studies I'm showing you today are based on the peer-reviewed literature. Here's a study on trees. Look at the top of that tree there, and you see the, da the damage in that top of the tree eventually will lead to the whole tree dying. And this is the study I alluded to of the insects. They made a precise model of the body of these insects and showed that 5G can induce heating and disrupt behavior. And this is a nature publication. As scientific reports is a nature publication. They say that these changes in insect behavior and morphology could come from heating because even though 5G is presented as causing no heat for these small animals on which agriculture depends, there's clearly evidence of resonance. Now, this is a list of many of the medical organizations that have been on record as advising of reducing exposure to children to wireless radiation. And here's an interesting thing. This and more can be found on our website. It's an ongoing list because it keeps growing. I won't obviously go into uh, details, but wireless companies have to file 10K forms for their stockholders every year. And here's what they say for Verizon for 2016. We may incur significant expenses in defending lawsuits. In addition, we may be required to pay significant awards or settlements. The companies are telling their shareholders that they face liabilities. Let's look at one application of millimeter wave. These service personnel playing the role of an unruly mob at Georgia's Moody Air Force Base are about to fall prey to an invisible ray. The hulking panel atop this Humvee is part of what the U.S. military calls the Active Denial System, or ADS. It's designed to incapacitate enemy combatants with an unnerving, non-lethal sensation of intense heat. Watch as the ray silently strikes and scatters the crowd. The Active Denial System has three great characteristics. First of all, it's safe. Second, it's effective. And third, it has a tremendous range compared to the other non-lethal weapons that today's warfighter has. This is the heart of this 100 kilowatt transmitter. This is the gyrotron. 200 kilowatts of uh, electricity is fed in and 100 kilowatts of radio frequency comes out. That millimeter wave energy comes out an aperture underneath the main reflector hits the subreflector, which illuminates that main reflector and sends a roughly antenna-sized beam downrange. 
Those holes that you see in the antenna are for the cameras and other visual equipment that the operator used so that he knows exactly where that beam is going. It's operated by a joystick. The operator looks into the console, sees exactly what that antenna is aimed at, moves the joystick left, antenna slews to the left, same way to the right. Then when there's an individual who's identified as a troublemaker, he has a cursor, he can put that cursor on that individual, pull the trigger that's on the joystick, and the energy is sent down range at the speed of light. The electromagnetic radiation released by the active denial system is similar to the microwaves in your microwave oven, in that it causes the water molecules in the target to become excited and heat up. But that's where the similarity ends. The ADS is designed to heat only the very surface of the skin. It does this by outputting only the carefully chosen radio wave frequency of 95 gigahertz. Even though it can easily penetrate clothing, the ADS generates a much shorter and safer wavelength of radio waves than those used in microwave ovens. The active denial system millimeter wave directed energy beam reaches 1 64th of an inch into human skin. So that is the most outermost layer of the skin, roughly equivalent to about three sheets of notebook paper. It is essentially affecting the pain nerves in the outermost layer of the skin, heating them up and causing an immediate repel effect. Even these stoic servicemen, aware of what's about to happen, engage, can't help but flinch when they feel the heat. This is the first time I've experienced the uh, beam from the active denial system, and, and it uh, feels like an intense warmth feeling, uh, kind of similar to opening a uh, very hot oven door, and it's a compelling feeling that you want to get out of the way of this beam. If you were not expecting this, it would very definitely shock you and make you want to move. The ADS represents just the latest effort to devise an effective ray weapon. That lovely antenna-sized beam, that beam forming, is critical to 5G wireless. It has to work with beam forming for up to a thousand antennas that are housed. It's a brilliant piece of design, but it should not be employed wirelessly. Fiber optic cable is the backbone to it, and it can be backbone all the way in. This hospital has lots of wires, and they need to keep it that way. So now we have some action in the Congress, and we're very fortunate that Anna Eshoo is one of the leaders. Jackie Spear has joined with her in that, and I think that they need all your support in their request to get data on the safety of 5G, because I can tell you, it does not exist, and we have studies indicating damage. We do. So this is not just a question of not wanting an antenna in your backyard. This is a question of what are we going to do to the plants and animals as well and the, and the trees that are left in the city. Because as any wireless 5G expert will tell you, in order to put up these antennas to work, you're going to have to cut down a lot of trees. Um, now, we're going to be hearing more about what you can do uh, at the end, of, and we'll talk with you about that. But I would also share with you this little cartoon that puts things in perspective. Right? Do you remember how long we debated tobacco? When I was a young woman, I worked at the National Academy of Sciences, and the very first thing I worked on took many years to get done, which was to recommend that there should not be smoking on airplanes. It took a long time to do that because the industry was so powerful, in, and there were so many people who said we weren't really sure for so long. And while we debated that, we are now dealing with the epidemic that it was a consequence. Did you know that cell phone, the one in your pocket, emits radio frequency radiation? As long as your phone's turned on, even if you're not talking or texting. The American Academy of Pediatrics in over a dozen countries recommends reducing children's exposure to wireless radiation. When using a cell phone, I always keep it away from my body. I use speakerphone or a headset like this. To stop microwave exposure, I put my phone on airplane mode and turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth function. I hold the phone at a distance and make sure it's not touching my body. Cell phones are not toys. Children's brains and bodies are still developing and are vulnerable to wireless radiation. Practice safe and responsible habits with yourself and your children. When using the computer, I always try to make sure my connection is corded, not wireless. Remember not to use your cell phone in the car. The phone works at higher power in metal surroundings and bounces around, increasing your family's radiation exposure. 
For their safety. For your safety. Because children are more vulnerable. Remind them. Remind yourself. To limit your microwave radiation exposures.